It sounds like it means one thing, but it could mean many different things. Hey there, it's Greg Chaplin, doctor of physical therapy and strength and conditioning specialist. And I work with people that have asymmetries and want to improve this asymmetry while also moving and feeling their best through progressive training. And one of the things I see online with other people that talk about asymmetry is they often mention that the pelvis is oriented to the right. Now we're going to answer the question, is the pelvis oriented to the right? And then discuss what that actually means and how it's going to impact our ability to select the right exercises and begin to integrate some of these findings within the context of a progressive training program. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right in. All right, so first of all, we got my friend Lucy here, Lucy Goosey, to help us understand what we mean by pelvic orientation and what we mean by pelvic orientation to the right. So this is your pelvis. If you didn't know that, now you know. And I call Lucy, Lucy Goosey, because she's got a ton of motion here within the pelvis. And mostly we don't have a lot of motion within the pelvis in reality. So we have what's called intrapelvic motion or small movements between the bones within the pelvis. And then we have movement of the pelvis as a whole. We call this movement in space of the whole pelvis orientation. So examples would be anterior pelvic tilt, it's a forward motion of the whole pelvis. Posterior pelvic tilt, that's a backward motion of the whole pelvis. Lateral pelvic tilt, a lateral motion of the whole pelvis. Hopefully you get the gist here. So when we're talking about the pelvis, because we have such little motion in the pelvis, we're usually talking about orientation. Now you'll hear a lot of people talking about a rightward orientation or an orientation to the right. And what they mean is that in some way, the pelvis as a whole unit is moving towards the right side. And I would say that on the whole, this is probably true. And there are many theories about why that could be the case. But if you observe people sort of out in the wild, if you will, you'll see a lot of pelvises that go to the right in some way. And the reason that I say in some way is because we have many planes of motion that we could be moving on and not everyone moves on the same plane. And thus this idea of pelvic orient, uh, pelvis orienting to the right can actually describe many different things. It sounds like it means one thing, but it could mean many different things. Let's dive into that here. So if we think about the planes of motion that we have available, front and back motion like this is movement in the sagittal plane. Movement side to side like this is movement in the frontal plane. And then rotational movement like this is in the transverse plane. Now we can be moving within any of these planes or any combination. And in most cases, it is gonna be some sort of a combination. So we can have a turn of the pelvis in the transverse plane, like this towards the right, which is going to impact the movement at the hips on either side a little bit differently than if we had motion, let's say on an oblique kind of a axis towards the right side. We can see that this is an orientation to the right, this is an orientation to the right, that's an orientation to the right, that's an orientation to the right. We have motion of the whole pelvis to the right side in all those cases, but because the actual position between the bones is differently, this means the muscles are also gonna be positioned differently as well, and that'll impact the exercises that we do. Now, the big problem here is that many people assume that we're talking about a transverse plane orientation towards the right, and when you assume that, then you use that as a justification to say, if that is the case, and that's the case for all people, then this backside of the right side is gonna be open and the backside of the left side is gonna be closed. So we need to do activities that shorten the right glute to turn us back in this direction and open up the back of the left hip to allow us to move in that direction. Now, if we were in the transverse plane and that was universal across the board, then that would be fine. But when we consider the fact that we could have this oblique axis orientation to the right, like this, that actually twists the pelvis back to the left, now we're gonna see some differences in the positions of the bones and thus the orientations of the muscles. So let's look at this as a counterexample. We push up and over on this sort of an axis, we're moving towards the right, but in this case, if we go far enough, we actually get this area here, which was previously open in the transverse plane example, now to actually be more closed down. And if we look at the left side, which was previously closed down in the transverse plane example, now, relatively speaking at least, it's a bit more opened up. 
So what does this mean? This means that if we were in that oblique axis representation that I just showed you, and we did exercises that shorten the right side and lengthen the left side, that we'd probably actually be doing the opposite of what we want to do. Okay, so hopefully now you understand that it's not quite so straightforward as just assuming that right orientation means one thing or another. So now the question is, what do we do about it? So before we talk about exactly what we're gonna do about it from a biomechanical standpoint, we need to understand that although it's very seductive, we shouldn't assume that these biomechanical findings are existing in a vacuum. And what I mean by this is that these asymmetries are serving a function. And the function that these asymmetries are serving we look from just like a really big pers uh, picture perspective is that they are helping us meet the demands of our movement tasks, right? Now I'm going to paint a picture here of sort of two ends of a spectrum, two common scenarios and how we're going to see asymmetry manifest a little bit differently here, but then the solution is going to be uh, fairly similar in the end. So on the one hand, we have people who have asymmetry that's present all the time. These are people oftentimes who are fairly inactive, deconditioned, maybe been in pain for a long time, kind of searching for the right thing to do, afraid to move, uh, afraid to do the activities that they want to do. And then as they get more out of shape, deconditioned, inactive, and in more pain, then that asymmetry is necessary for them to meet the demands of just their daily tasks. So then it's always present. And this becomes a really uh, kind of terrible loop to be in. I was there myself, so I totally get it. And it's all because we're operating under that assumption that we need to find that right exercise first, fix the position, then move more, and then we'll begin to feel better at that point. Uh, instead, we're going to have to reverse that, especially for those individuals, and get moving more, get back into shape a little bit more, begin to tolerate movement and reduce fear of movement. Then all of a sudden, uh, relative to our preparedness, we're not going to have to utilize that asymmetry quite as much. Okay, So those are those people over here. Now, way on the other end of the spectrum, we have people that like to train really hard and are in really good shape. Uh, even, you know, athletes, you're, you're really super fit people. In this case, what often happens is we can have simple errors in intensity and volume across a program that cause someone to have to use asymmetrical strategies uh, in more of their program than is desirable. And then that patterning starts to kind of trickle over into the rest of their life or the fatigue that they're accumulating in training trickles over to the rest of their life. And then that fatigue becomes a factor that influences the increased use of asymmetrical movement strategies. So that's kind of the big picture here. I just painted one end and the other end of a spectrum, and there's gonna be variations on that. You could be anywhere in between, and depending on the phase of your rehab, you might be a little bit more like person A or person B, and you could have been, or you might be these different people or closer to these different people at different times, and that's totally normal. But regardless, we need to understand the context within which this asymmetry is occurring. And then in combination with understanding that context and addressing the root causes of that context, we also need to have venues to explore motions that directly oppose those that we are overly expressing in our movement. So what I mean by that, let's say we had this transverse plane orientation to the right like this. Well, in this case, we're going into internal rotation over the right leg, external rotation over the left, in our program, we're going to have something that allows us to recapture that turn back towards the left side where we get external rotation on the right and internal rotation on the left. If we were that oblique axis person going up like this, up and over, we need something else that pulls us back and allows us to turn back in the opposite direction. So we had orientation to the right in both cases. If we have that transverse plane, we might do something like a staggered deadlift where we have the left foot back and the right foot forward, and we're gonna practice turning that pelvis back towards the left like this. Now, if we're that person who had the oblique axis kind of position, what we might do instead is put the right foot back, left foot forward, still staggered deadlift, but then practice moving back and opening up the back of that right hip where we let the left kind of sink down a little bit. Now, the good news is that we don't need anything hyper specific to do this. Sometimes it's as simple, actually most of the time it's as simple as just picking an appropriate load, designing an appropriate program, and then doing both sides with an appreciation for the asymmetry. So when you 
go to video yourself and you go to look at how you're doing these activities, you'll often notice a difference between what's going on on one side or the other. And if you can improve those over time and make them feel and look better over time, over the course of let's say a four to eight week program, you can not only improve the endurance, strength, power, or other qualities that are gonna help you progress and no longer need to use the asymmetry, but you can also address the asymmetry itself. Now, obviously, if you're not a coach and you don't know what you're looking for, this is a little bit more challenging. And in that case, you're gonna to have to go through more of a process of building awareness of where your body is through various feedback mechanisms. Now, one of those is going to be to be able to do a self-assessment and design your program based on that assessment. And then the next thing is gonna to be to actually look how you are performing these activities as well as gathering data as to the reps, sets, et cetera, that you're doing and how your body is responding and then making those adjustments as you go. This is something that I teach inside my educational product, Total Body Restoration. I'll be opening that up soon. So if you want to get in on that, go ahead and join at the link in the description. Now, if you want uh, me to do this with you and you want to do some one-on-one -on -one coaching, I do offer a virtual training process in which we go through this together. We do a virtual assessment. We see what pattern your body is most likely moving in. We design a program based on that pattern and your functional goals. We design an initial program and then monitor you as you go through it, giving you the necessary cues to be able to adjust that position so that you can make improvements in asymmetry as well as those other qualities as you go. So big picture here. We still need to train to get the adaptations we need so we no longer need to use those asymmetries, but in the process, we need to have an appreciation for these asymmetries, understand when and why they happen, and be able to make the necessary adjustments as we go. So hopefully that made sense and hopefully this answered some questions for you. If you have additional questions, go ahead and plop them down below in the comments. And as always, subscribe to the channel, share this video, whatever, uh, do it all. And until next time, thanks a lot for watching. Peace.